that I just learned by teaching these different classes over the years. So what would you change? Um, what would I change? Uh, you mean about how I used to teach classes earlier? Or like just yeah. in, like today as a yeah. teacher, yeah. what needs to change? Um, that's a hard question. Um, I think there are many different answers. Uh, I think the a very important thing is to get more people into college, whether it's universities or whether it's community colleges. I think certainly in this country, the appreciation for university education has taken a downturn, um, partly because of political reasons, but also partly because certain um, Venture capitalists, who I will not mention here, have been going around saying, hey, you can be a high school dropout and be a billionaire. That's fine. You don't need these professors teaching you, you know, left-wing stuff or whatever. You're not very left-wing. I'm pretty centrist. Um, uh, so it's partly that. I think that messaging is, uh, is, is impacting how many people choose to come to university or how many people choose to go to vocational school. Like if you want to become an electrician, you don't need to get an electrical engineering degree in, a, in Illinois. You can go to a community college like Parkland College here, get a perfectly fine vocational degree and you'll be fine. You'll be a certified electrician. Uh, you'll be a, you know, and you can go about doing your, uh, your activities. But even that, I think um, there is a certain feeling in this country of, you know, I don't need that. I can be an expert, you know, by watching social media comments or whatever, right? So watching I, YouTube. Watching YouTube or, or maybe not even that, you know, uh, we have had a lot of armchair experts uh, in the last couple of years who know a lot more about pandemics and diseases than experts, right, uh, just by listening to comments <laughs> in social media. And so I think the value of education comes from not just the um, content of the classes that are being taught, but also from being there with people, with the fellow students and learning from, their, from them as well. This is certainly true of me, you know, when, when I was in college, what I learned in college, half of it was from my teachers, half of it was from my fellow students. Right? Just by observing them, like, okay, you know, what is that person doing that mm. I'm not doing? Or, oh, that person has this very nice technique. Um, uh, that person, my friend might ask me, oh, you know, how did you cover this particular topic? I'm like, okay, this is how I did it. And like, oh, that's very intuitive. So I learned a lot more from just talking and observing them. I think that's the part of the education that gets missed when, you know, in the media people talk about universities, you know, they're filled with these left-wing professors and they're turning all our kids into, into left-wing zealots. That's certainly not true. Uh, you know, we are, we are not political at all here, certainly, certainly not in my department, computer science. So I think part of it, I think that's something that needs to change is the appreciation for um, a college degree or a community college degree. Um, in terms of teaching, I think there is a high variability in how different teachers teach, right? And that, that's just what it is, you know, different people teach differently. Um, some people actually don't like teaching and they shouldn't be, a, they should not be a faculty member. Right. Uh, that's one of the things about the tenure system that you get, right? So uh, once you get tenure, they can't really fire you unless you have an ethical violation or something. You can right. have pretty low teaching scores and they can give you a warning or so, but I don't know what the rules are on, you know, firing a really bad teacher. Um, this is something that does get talked about in the media, about school teachers, but also about university uh, faculty. I would say that's, uh, it's true, but most of us who are teaching, a large majority of us who are teaching are really enthusiastic about the topic. Uh, and we, um, we have, you know, it's certainly not like we don't like teaching and we are here, you know, gritting our teeth. That's certainly not true. It's definitely not true of pretty much all the colleagues that I talk with. Right? Um, so I think just the awareness uh, of that. And then the third thing, and this was actually told to me by one of my um, podcast guests. Um, she told me that um, we as faculty, uh, as, as professors, we don't communicate to our students how exciting it is to be a professor. Right? So students see our life, you know, Undergrads, when they see our life, they're like, okay, professor came to class, taught, and then went back. What does a professor do the remaining... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, like, whatever, 100 hours of the week, right? That's an undergrad view. The grad student's view is like, I see my advisor constantly running around, and they're constantly in meetings, one meeting to another. When I email them, they're like, oh, I'm busy with the proposal today, I can't respond, can we talk tomorrow? When do they get time for the rest of their life? Are they really enjoying this life? Like, very different views, right? Um, and I think about my own life, I'm like, no, 
I have enough time to do teaching. I have I have get I set aside time to do research. I talk with my PhD students. I have a nice diverse group of five or six PhD students. Uh, and then I do my own music thing. I do my radio show. I can do my podcast. Uh, so I can do all of these things as long as I plan my life well. And it's fun. And even the teaching part of it, I enjoy that. The, mm -hmm. the part that some students think is, you know, like not sexy. I actually enjoy that a lot because it teaches me. Um, and I love interacting with students because, you know, they ask awesome questions and some questions make me think. Uh, other questions make me think about how I think about something that I know and it changes perspective. So that's, so those are, I think that's something that we faculty are not good at communicating because we are just, I think a lot of us just enjoy our job so much, right, that we never get to talk about it, how, 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 how exciting it is, you know, just to be a professor. I would not give up anything. I, I would not, you know, we were talking about this earlier, right? So um, at any point of time in my life, I'm always thinking, should I stay a faculty member? Should I go to a big company instead? Just drop everything and just go to a big company? Or should I like start up my own company? You know, all options are available. Or maybe something else. Should I just abandon computing and become a full-time professional musician or do whatever? Right? All those options are there. To me, the, the option that always sounds the most exciting and has, has so far, now this may change tomorrow, um, the, exciting, the most exciting option is being a professor. Right? It's, it's the... It's, a, it's the profession that gives me the most satisfaction interacting with students, interacting with my fellow colleagues, also interacting with people in industry who are doing, you know, who are building systems. So, um, so I am where I, where I want to be at every point of time. But again, you know, that's not something we communicate to students all the time. So it doesn't get captured um, in all the uh, stereotypes that exist about professor life. You know, there's a lot of very nice um, cartoons, for instance. You know, you've probably seen XKCD and PhD comics and all these other cartoons that exist. And some of them are true. You know, some of, I, I love all those. I, I love all of those comics. Uh, uh, and uh, but then there are some stereotypes out there about professors as well, which which are not true. So I think that's that's something that I think uh, faculty need to be doing more of.